Very soon, our phones will replace our doctors. Why do we see doctors anyway? For that personal connection, for helping us solve our problems, to get better, to enjoy life. But that's part of a model that's actually been obsolete for a while now. It's part of a model that we've had for the last several thousand years. And it's part of a model that's not really solving, on a wide scale, the epidemics that are hitting our society. Around the country, people are overworked. We're trying to earn more, but we're saving less. We're spending more time doing the things that matter less to us, trying to set up a future, and becoming overly stressed in the process. Cortisol is a molecule in the brain, which affects your immune system, your mood, and your metabolism. And if you're overly stressed, you have more cortisol. Students around the country, trying to build a good future for themselves, are turning to Adderall in schools. About 20% of students in elite universities around the college and around the nation think they need to do this just to perform, just to keep up, just to realize their life's dreams. Is this really the solution? If you have a problem and you want to try to solve it, why doing something where the side effect could be riskier than the benefit itself? So what got me interested in looking at our health system and our life system and engineering how we feel and how we perform every day? Actually, it wasn't just stress. It was talking with a lot of different people, friends, colleagues, people out in the community, people who are unsatisfied with our quest for health, for life, for well-being. Personally, I engaged in something called martial arts a number of years ago to raise the consciousness, to study Buddhism, to study Zen and meditation. And what was supposed to be an adventure and personal growth and self-defense and excitement actually turned out rather negative. During a routine practice, an intense roundhouse kick exploded an injury into my lower back into being. I thought, okay, sports injury, four weeks, six weeks, a little bit longer to heal. But what was a routine injury ended up taking four years of searching and suffering to try to overcome. I couldn't understand it. Every single person I saw seemed to have the answer, thought they had the answer, but didn't. And what turned into talking to 14 people and getting each a different path, a different perspective, none of which intersected made me think, is this really the way to solve a problem? Is this really the efficient way that we're supposed to go about healthcare and well-being? So I talked to a lot of other people, and they said, yeah, we feel the same. There's a problem out there. If you want to go and solve something with your health, you get a luck of the draw. If you have enough time for a short doctor visit after a long wait, maybe you'll get a solution, but maybe not. So I started thinking, can we redesign this system? Can we revolutionize healthcare? If doctors really aren't the optimal way to achieve a, problem, a success in the quickest manner possible, what other system could we design? So I started researching, and I found several really interesting and innovative solutions that are already out there today. 23andMe is a company that instead of waiting for doctor visits, waiting for MRIs, waiting for very large reports, you can mail them, get a little tube, spit in it, mail it out, and for 100 bucks, get a complete genetic profile. What are you predisposed to? What should you do to mitigate the risks that might come up later in life? Being proactive instead of reactive. Taking health care from a data-driven perspective. Or Ginger.io. This company has been called the psychic health care app that knows you're about to get depressed before you do. So instead of waiting for the symptoms to come up, and instead of waiting for the search after it might already be too late, why not have a bit of an early warning? So how do you put these together? How do you put all the data of a genetic report and all the data of the different doctor visits together to make sense? When I saw different people over those four years, I had to crunch it myself. I had to think, how do these overlap? How do these interact? Which is valid? Which isn't? Well, a few years ago, IBM revealed Watson to the world. Watson is a supercomputer that showed up on Jeopardy and mopped the floor with two world champions in minutes. Watson, as an artificial intelligence, can crawl through millions of pages of data in seconds can store thousands of terabytes of information and report on something instantly. Watson's actually being used in hospitals around the world. If somebody has, say, a concern about lung cancer and they ask a human doctor, traditionally, the accuracy of that doctor in diagnosing lung cancer accurately would be about 50%. With Watson, it's 90. So sure, we might appreciate that human contact. We may appreciate that opinion. But ultimately, if your life is in the balance for the life of your child, what would you turn to for the most likely resource to make sure you're successful and healthy and avoid a long road of dangerous side effects from things like chemotherapy, which swarm the body in chemicals and may not be the most relevant and appropriate way to achieve health? So looking at the system and these resources and the technology that's out here today, I thought of creating something that would merge all of them together, 
that would put your healthcare in the palm of your hand. And this is what I came to create. I want to run a marathon in four months. How should I train? Based on your current health, physiology, and genetics, I recommend nutrition. Up potassium, sodium, and magnesium by 40%. Double your daily B12 to 400 milligrams and coconut water to 16 ounces. I want to lose 20 pounds for my wedding in two months. What should I do? How much time do you have to exercise each week? Like two hours. My life is crazy. Switch to the low glycemic paleo diet I'm emailing you. Take two minute cold showers every day to boost your metabolism. Stop eating after 6 p.m. and take the four heart-safe, fat-burning supplements just added to your regimen. I love you. Now, now, remain faithful to your fiancé. Just leave me a good tip. So Opti, short for self-optimization, is the manifestation of a solution that would completely change healthcare, make it instant, make it automated, make it efficient, and make it customizable. And as I'm creating it, if you're interested in leading this revolution, I'd like your help. So far, we have a system. We have the beginnings of an algorithm. But something like this is going to take a lot more work. And it may take a road uphill, but it's certainly better than what we have today. And using this system that's now becoming something like Opti, I solve this four-year mystery, this four-year path and darkness of chronic pain and questioning and wondering if I should just give up and settle. That whole thing was solved in two weeks and 80% of the symptoms I was experiencing vanished overnight. It turned out that what I was experiencing was something systemic, not something localized. How many of us see one, two, three doctors, maybe take health into our own hands with something like WebMD, think we have a solution, but really, it's just partial. Really, the data is just partial. I saw an eye doctor last month, and as smart as he was, as nice and well-informed as he was, he admitted to me, I read six scientific journals a month to keep up on the eye. The eye? What if you saw that same optometrist and you had a condition, common or uncommon, and were relying on a report mentioned in one of those journals, maybe a sentence here, a conclusion there, and during your visit, he didn't recall it. Maybe he didn't have time to read it because something happened with his family. That's understandable. That's human. But if that data and information is out there, why should you have to suffer? Why should you not get the benefit because somebody you think is credible and somebody you think you can trust doesn't have it available on hand? If you get a physical in America, you get a few blood results. You get an overall checkup. You get some cardiovascular metrics. But if you get a physical in Japan, you get dozens of pages of information on your blood. You get a health score. A friend of mine who's working at Google in Tokyo recently got a physical there. He was graded a C. He works out for two hours a day. He's in the prime of health. He's in his early 30s but he had low cholesterol. Turns out cholesterol in different parts of it are actually helpful for tissue rebuilding. So if a different country is so vigilant on something that most of us here aren't aware of on a regular basis, what could be missing? What could we be missing by only seeing doctors in our own backyard? What could we be doing that's inefficient? A lot of people are trying to find enough time to work out every day. Most of us can't make that time to go to the gym, to lift weights, to, to do aerobics, as much as is recommended. This is the scientific seven minute workout. And scientifically, it's supposed to be equivalent to two hours of intense aerobic exercise and strength training. Maybe not an ideal replacement, but it hacks your metabolism into thinking that's what happened. So for those of us looking for a better solution, a more efficient solution, things like this that are out there that could be reported to us instantly if we have something like Mary on the Opti video had with a wedding and not enough time to exercise, why should we do ourselves the disservice of not being aware of something that people took the hard work and time and energy to put together? As far as overwork, as far as stress goes, I experienced something that a lot of us do in the modern world. When I was 19 and starting my first company, working 100-hour weeks and trying to balance that out with a world-class education at the University of Michigan, I experienced overwork and I experienced burnout. I didn't know how to juggle it. I didn't know how to take care of my mental health with the level of demands I was placing on myself. I had a dream, I had a goal, I had an ambition. Enough people achieve things like that, why wasn't it possible? So with a system that's becoming Opti, I found a cocktail of different types of supplements that allowed me to perform at the level I wanted to in a healthy fashion. Say I took Adderall and I said, oh, I'll deal with the side effects. I'll deal with the different things this does to my brain to achieve what I want in the short term. Ultimately, that's kind of like chemo. That's not really an ideal long-term solution. That's flooding the body with something that might be okay 
specifically in a localized fashion, but isn't great systemically. So by taking a healthy different mix of natural supplements from organic sources, I was able to heal and strengthen my body beyond what I considered normal. And the extra energy and ability to tolerate cortisol was a byproduct. I found a really neat uncommon supplement called phosphatidylserine, which actually changes how your body metabolizes and processes cortisol. So you could do things that may make yourself more stressed, but you don't feel that, you don't experience that. And it's safe, it's something like an amino acid. So why should we be on this search, trying to achieve our dreams, trying to do things that are meaningful to us in life, but not having the awareness or the resources to make them so? Every year, maybe every two years, we upgrade our phones, we upgrade our devices. If you have a machine and it's not able to handle the performance on it, you replace it, you switch out a part. We've been doing this for years, we're used to doing this. If you have a computer and you want to run an amazing new game, you check the graphics processor, the RAM, the hard drive, it can cut it or it can't. So you switch out the parts, replace the device altogether. Anything that you would want to do with technology, you have a systemic, analyzed, specific benchmark. It can either meet those stats or it can't. So as we place more demands on ourselves, as we change our diets, as our food may become less nutritious, as we work more and play less, are we crunching those data points versus how we're taking care of ourselves? For most of us, we're not. We have the same bodies we did 100 years ago, 20,000 years ago. Why not look at the exact same fashion and match it data point to data point? If you replaced your phone, if it has a glitch or error in performance, well, you're coming up to a major life event, a job interview, a wedding, the birth of your child. Why would you tolerate the same glitch? You're more important than a phone. So thinking about that, and thinking about how we consciously evolve and switch out and discard our technology in a second, we might have some attachment to our humanity, our bodies. What's the next phase in this? What's the next step beyond personalized, customized healthcare, which admittedly is coming, but as our devices get smaller and smaller, as we go from working on a computer to holding a computer, to wearing a computer, there's already technology that's out there that's being used that's inside of us, that's integrated. There's cameras that people implant in their eyes to help them see better or see it all if they're born blind. And there's an emerging field of nanomedicine where you actually have tiny bots in the bloodstream injecting different parts of medicine exactly where it needs to go. So if you have a small tumor and you do elect to say get chemo on it, why well, flood your body, destroy your immune system, invite all those side effects? Why not do something local, something specific? Why not have a safe, tiny nanobot, smaller than the smallest living organism? Things were already being built, both out of machines and out of biological material. Cut away the cancer as it's starting to build. Cut out the scar tissue and save you the years of rehabilitation. Help the muscle strengthen locally if you don't have the time or the ability or maybe the physical energy to exercise as you need to. So I ask you, as we're moving into an age where it's commonplace to continuously augment our devices. And we're thinking about ourselves and the demands placed on humanity every day and the goals and the dreams we want to find. I wonder if you'd like to think about a coming age where it's going to be time to augment ourselves. <laughs>